Committee. I'm Councilmember Weezar. We've been joined by Councilmember Marquis Harris Dawson, Councilmember Mitch Englander. Uh, we'll start the agenda with item number eight. Item eight, eight Councilman, is the Director of Planning's weekly report. Uh, thank you, Chair Welcome. Weezar. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and members of the uh, committee. Uh, just briefly, on February 11th, our City Planning Commission took a few actions that will be forwarded to the um, Planning and Land Use Management Committee. One of them is a series of um, ordinance amendments and initi initiatives related to uh, addressing the homeless uh, um, issues and homeless emergencies. So that will be coming to this committee um, in short order, as well as uh, modifications to the previously approved West Adams, Baldwin Hills, Lamar Park um, Community Plan. i uh, just also like to bring to the committee's attention that we are will be going out to having community meetings coming up in March and April regarding Recode LA, and that's a multi-year initiative that the city has undertaken to really modernize its zoning code. And so we will be having uh, meetings. Um, we'll have seven community meetings, and the geographies are based upon the Area Planning Commission areas. So those will be coming up in March and April. We also have had some um, informational sessions uh, within the city family, and, and we've had many of the council offices represented there. So with that, I um, conclude my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And when, uh, at the Recode LA, when can we expect that to, um, after the outreach meetings, uh, come to before Plum or council? Uh, we the can, CPC? Right. Uh, what we can do is we can bring it back for some updates to the uh, Plum, whenever it's convenient for this committee. So we can either do it before, during, or after. So um, we're happy to do it, whichever you feel is best. Okay. Thank you. All right, item number two. Uh, we will um, approve on consent if there are no cards. If no objection, no objection, so ordered. Item number four, we will continue. Uh, we have no date certain yet. Is there any timeline requirements on that? No? Um, no timing requirements on item four? No, right? We're um, the item is going to be re-noticed, and the time limit's been extended through uh, motion and council, so. Uh, you could speak into the microphone. The item, there's no date specific. It, it, it will be re-noticed when it's back in committee. Okay, thank you. So we'll continue that item. Item number four. Item number five. Uh, we could hear that item, please. Sure. Item five, Councilman, is a Cultural Heritage Commission report relative to the inclusion of the Edinburgh Bungalow Court as a historic cultural monument in CD5. Item five, there are no cards, but it is at the request and co with conversations with uh, Council District Five, we will move it forward with no recommendation uh, to Council. Any questions or comments on that? Any objection to moving it forward with no recommendation to full Council? Seeing no objections, so ordered. Okay. All right, so that takes us to item uh, number one. Item one, Councilman, is a motion, Wesson Wizar. It's directing the planning department, along with the city attorney, NCD10, to prepare an ICO for the Pickfar Village neighborhood in CD10. Okay, thank you. All right, we have a number of speaker cards. Uh, each public speaker has a total of one minute to speak. Shanti Hughes, Rochelle Koretz, John Donovan. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Chantia Hughes? Chantia, yes. Yes, okay. 
Do I need to mm -hmm. give any other introduction? Yes, you could start. My name is Shantia Hughes. I'm a resident of Pig Fair Village. And it, it is important for us to maintain the scale, character, and integrity of the homes in our community and to protect the quality of life of its current residents. Please support the motion for Pig Fair Village to have an ICO modeled after the Beverly Grove RFA. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Rochelle Koretz, John Donovan, Joel Sarafin. Good afternoon. Rochelle Koretz. I'm a resident of Pig Fair Village and I'm currently residing in a duplex that my grandfather purchased in 1946, long before we had any issues with overdevelopment. I grew up in this neighborhood and attended local schools. We never had to worry about what the neighborhood would look like. The worst case scenario was that someone would choose to paint their house an odd color, at least odd to those of us who are more traditional. But the times have changed and now our concerns are about what will happen to one of our lovely single family homes if a developer buys it, demolishes it, and builds some oversized McMansion. Because of my history here, I know many of my longtime neighbors and we all share the same concern. We desperately want to preserve our scale and character. Allowing these oversized homes to be constructed is heartbreaking to so many of us. We ask that you support Council President Wesson's motion so that we can have some protection until the BMO is amended. Thank you. Thank you. My name is John Donovan, and I've been a resident of Pickfair Village for almost six years. Years ago, when my wife and I moved to Los Angeles, we fell in love with the 1920s and 30s homes in the area. When we discovered Pickfair Village, we knew instantly that this charming oasis is where we wanted to live. Uh, the scope and integrity of these homes lends itself to a feeling of community where I'll often engage my neighbors in their front yards or on their porches, something that will be lost if people are allowed to erect monster houses that consume the entire lot. Please help us save our neighborhood and approve our request for an ICO modeled after the Beverly Grove RFA. The amazing architecture of Pickfair Village can be preserved and developed without being demolished. Thank you. Thank you. Joel Sarafin, Catherine Harris Richardson, Debbie Gagan. Good afternoon. Joel Serafin, a resident of Pickfair Village for 18 years and also in the design and construction management community for over 30 years here in LA. So I'm speaking as a proponent of both uh, a homeowner and good residential as well as commercial design and planning. The current building baseline, I'm sorry, the current city baseline mansionization ordinance is geared to build on 50% of the lot. And the city is currently studying that because no thought was given to older neighborhoods where homes occupy only 25 to 33% of the lot. There's also bonuses in the current BMO which allow up to an additional 20%, which means building on 70% of the lot in neighborhoods that most lots are only uh, 25 to 33% structure. So there are obviously some flaws that the city planning department has realized, and I urge you to include Pickford Village in the ICO, similar to the Beverly Grove, so that we can protect our neighborhood from interim Thank teardowns. Thank you. Catherine Harris Richardson, Debbie, G Debbie Gagan. Hello, everyone. My name is Catherine Harris Richardson. I live in Pickford in Pickfair Village on Ogden Drive since 1971. These large buildings are overpowering the neighborhood. They cut out a lot of natural sunlight coming into our homes and they are scary. We are a closed community and look out for each other. We enjoy walking in the neighborhood and knowing our neighbors and also knowing that we are safe. Even if they have the right to build these tall block homes, the community's feelings should be considered and respected. Please pass the motion for us to have an ICO modeled after Beverly Grove RFA. Thank you. Thank you. Debbie Gagan, Nava Telecki, Roxanne Smith, and Michael Levitt. Hi, I'm Debbie Gaughan. When I moved to Los Angeles, I had never seen homes like the 1920s and 30s bungalows ever, and I fell in love. 
The charm of their scale and character is what makes this neighborhood special, and for me, that is directly related to quality of life. Right now in Pickford Village, there's an alarming frenzy of teardowns because of our, we are vulnerable, so I urge the planning department to work swiftly as possible on amending the BMO and please include the square footage of attached garages as part of the house size. Because years from now, I do not want to have to go to the public library archives to see what our neighborhood looked like. I have 350 signatures that I'd like to submit that request support for the ICO um, for Beverly Grove, modeled after the uh, for Beverly Pickford Village, modeled after the Beverly Grove RFA. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I live in uh, Pickford Village for 13 years with my family, and I stand behind every note that my friend said here, and I ask you to support the ICO protection for Pickford Village. Uh, thank you. Thank you. My name is Roxanne Smith, and I've lived in Pickford Village for the past four years. I moved there from Beverly Hills, where um, mansions are being, single family homes are being torn down and homes are being built to the property line. What I've found in Pick Fair Village is a community with wonderful architecture, wonderful people, and what we would like to do is to keep it that way. Please pass this ICO, which is modeled on the Beverly Grove RFA for us. We would appreciate that greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Levitt, Editha Levitt, Gerardo Reyes, and Nancy Hanover Reyes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Levitt, and I have been a resident in Pick Bear Village for 25 years. Uh, this is my wife. My name is Editha Levitt. Okay. One of the reasons I moved to Pick Fair was the neighborhood actually had the feel of a small town. People often sat outside on their porches and chatted with their neighbors. Before I bought my house, I walked around the neighborhood and people actually said hello and were happy to talk about their experience of living in Pick Fair. In the last few years, a number of the houses have been taken down and replaced by large two-story houses. These houses no longer have front porches and the major feature of the house is a massive garage where the driveway used to be. The whole nature of the neighborhood is changing and the new houses appear more like fortresses than homes. I urgently request that you support the interim control ordinance and do whatever is in your power to maintain Pick Fair as a true village and not another neighborhood of massive fortresses. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Arado Reyes, Nancy Hanover Reyes, and Monique Caraba. My name is Gerardo Reyes. My wife and I live in Pickford Village in a house built in 1923. We moved into this area because of the small town character of the neighborhood. With real estate speculation at a high in Los Angeles, we have seen new construction that is out of proportion with the size of the lots. The result is construction that makes it obvious that we need to restrict the size of houses being built so we can stop the mansions that are ruining the neighborhood. We hope to pass the motion for Pickford Village to have an ICO modeled after the Beverly Grove RFA. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, hello, my name is Nancy Hanover Reyes. I am a 19-year-old, 19-year resident in Pickford Village. I live in a 1923 bungalow-style home. It was the first home built on our block when this large parcel was called Peak. Pico Heights. Later in the 30s, the adjoining lots were constructed with two-story duplexes. Our one-story home is flanked by three of them. Though they are each twice as tall as our home, they never block our sunlight or feel intrusive. The reason for this is that each property is buffered from the other one with a driveway. The footprint of each building is similar in size and placement on the lot. The front and back yardage is also of equal size. Throughout Pickfair Village, there are very few bungalows with second stories that are looming over these private areas of their neighbors. Therefore, the standard wooden fence provides adequate privacy for family activities in the back. The more public areas are in the front and provide a park-like setting for gardening, a play area for children and pets, yard sales, and a place to socialize with those who are passing by. Please support the ICO modeled after the Beverly Grove RFA. Thank you. Thank you. So you, you are uh, Nancy, right? Okay, thank you. Monique Caraba, 
uh, Joe Caraba and Elizabeth Carlin from CD10. Um, my name is Monique Caraba. I live in Pickborough Village and I'm also a realtor in Los Angeles. I am an avid supporter of architecture in Los Angeles and a current member of the LA Conservancy. The current baseline mansionization loopholes allow for mammoth structures without care for continuity or balance. I stand behind the ICO in Pickford Village. I support new development in all areas of Los Angeles, but only if it's a balance of structure and landscape, rather than squeezing the largest home possible in the area without a care for outdoor space. A box with no concept of balance of outdoor area and structure disturbs the light of neighboring homes and sense of neighborhood. When there is a loss of balance and continuity, homes neighboring McMansions are worth less unless they are teardowns. And, and they make the neighboring homes lose sunlight and disturb the warm neighborhood feel as they are poorly planned and also the neighboring homes loses pri privacy. If you own a home next to one, say your home is, tw uh, is a 1920s bungalow, it loses value. If a McMansion is built next to it, these homes, when not planned correctly, make our neighborhoods undesirable unless they are teardowns. Uh, let's, Thank you. let's let the old LA and new LA unite with proper planning. As a stakeholder and realtor, I support an ICO in Pickford Village. Thank you. Joe Caraba. My name is Joe Caraba. I've been a resident and homeowner in Pickford Village for 15 years. Uh, I'm not anti-development, but it would be a shame to lose the charm and character of our neighborhood by having it be overtaken by multiple oversized homes on block after block. There needs to be balance. Approving the motion to include Pickfair Village in an ICO is the only way to be sure we can achieve this balance. While more permanent rules are finalized and put in place, I fully support the ICO for Pickfair Village, and I ask the committee to support and pass the motion as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Elizabeth Carlin on behalf of Council President Wesson. I'm here today to ask the board to respectfully ask to move this item forward. We've met with our Pickfair Village neighborhood in January, and we have a clear consensus and an overwhelming majority that our community is asking the Department of City Planning to draft an ICO similar to the Beverly Grove RFA at this location. We have received a petition that was submitted here earlier with 351 residents, and I also have letters of some individuals who were not able to join us that I'll submit for the record today but we would respectfully ask to move this item forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're gonna adopt the motion and refer it to staff. Uh, and um, any objections, any questions, comments? Uh, for those who uh, provided public testimony, if you could keep in contact with CD10 to provide you the information about how this is proceeding and when this item will be back uh, uh, to Plum for a further hearing. Uh, staff analyzes it, reviews it, and then brings it back to Plum. So thank you very much. So ordered, refer to staff. Item number three. <clears throat> item three, Councilman, is a city attorney ordinance for a development agreement between the city and MGA North LLC. Staff here for a brief um, overview of this item. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, uh, Plum Committee members. My name is Nicholas Hendricks. I've worked on the MGA North project over the last couple of years. Um, I'm just here uh, in case you guys have any questions. Uh, we've come a long ways and I think uh, we had a lot of community support for this project, um, and we feel that uh, we're ready to move forward uh, with this final chapter in this project. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Engbender, your desire? Uh, and uh, so we'll um, motion by Mr. Engbender to approve. Seconded by Mr. Fuentes. Uh, city attorney prepare ordinance. Okay. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Next item number six. Item six, councilman, is a hardship exemption 
by Selwyn and Jane Yoslowitz. Uh, it's the hardship exemption. It's located in CD 11. Okay. I could. Um, I'm Selwyn Yoslowitz. Okay, thank you. Let me go through. Uh, I'll call people up. Okay, I have two cards for the applicant and the applicant representative. Um, do we need a, uh, you, you, the applicants have five minutes to make a presentation. Uh, the representative, you guys could decide which one or share those five minutes, however you'd like. Okay, so Le Selwyn Yaslovitz yeah. and Jose Navarrete. Yeah, hi. My name is Selwyn Yastovitz. My wife and I have lived for 20 years in a house. We live in Westchester in Los, Los Angeles. And all we want to do is add 260 square feet on the back of existing garage. We want to build a recreation room for our, uh, yeah, we have a special needs young adult. And uh, we've been to our neighbors. No one has an issue. We've never done any major remodeling to the structure of a house. And everyone's, and no one has an issue at all. And um, we went and hired we spent eleven and a half thousand dollars on architects. We had to. We got all the the approvals from different departments, and we, the original plans for the city were approved with no conditions. So we ordered the windows, the lead time, and only to find out later that there was a special emergency ordinance which was passed only in our immediate area to stop to prevent Mac Manch large houses from being built. So we're just trying to build 260 square feet in addition to our existing garage. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Jose Navarrete. I work with Kenne Group Inc. And uh, we were hired to do the uh, plans and the drawings with the architects and engineers. Um, we started this process around February of 2015. Around March uh, 25, uh, the city passed the ICO number 2443, which um, basically reduced the floor block coverage. I just want to let you know that we got plans approved by, this, by the planning department. Everything is ready to go except for this hardship um, situation. And um, the, I, I appeal to, to you because uh, this is a small addition, only 260 square, uh, 260 square feet, uh, which will add from the existing 51% to a 54% uh, floor, uh, lot floor coverage. Um, the actually the lot for um, floor coverage, yes. So um, it's a very a small addition that is uh, located in the back of the garage, and I appeal. Uh, uh, hopefully, you can uh, approve this uh, this addition. Thank you, Oscar Sergio Sobrero. Now you have, you're fine. All right, now we'll listen from, uh, hear from CD11, Ezra Gale. Thank you, Chair, Honorable Council Members. My name is Ezra Gale with the Office of Council Member Mike Bonin. Um, this is an unfortunate situation where some applicants interacted with the city on uh, at least two occasions and were told uh, to proceed forward with plans for a very uh, minimal remodel, actually the smallest remodel. Can you that, speak into the microphone, please? Sorry. Thank you. Is it, this is actually the smallest remodel that this uh, committee has seen as part of the hardship exemption. And again, based on the at least two interactions that the applicants had with the city, they were just told to proceed forward and to act uh, on their application. So given those circumstances, as well as the extensive due diligence that the applicants have done reaching out to their uh, neighbors and any potential interested parties, we do support uh, their hardship exemption. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, given the testimony by the council office, the local council office, and the fact that the scale of this addition meets the intent of the BMO, I'd ask that we approve uh, the exemption. Second, Second by Marquis Harris Dawson. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Next item. Next item, councilman, is item seven. It's an application by Scott and Heather Menkes. It's also a hardship exemption from the uh, BMO ICO in CD5. Is there someone here from CD5 on this item? Okay. 
Can you do me a favor? I'm going I'm to listen first from the applicant, but if you could fill out a card for our records. Thank you. Heather Mencus. Hi, my name is Heather Mencus, and we're filing an application to... Can you move the microphone down, please? Thank you. My name is Heather Mankus, and my husband and I have filed an application to replace, slightly relocate, and remove windows at the back of our residence and on the far north uh, side of the residence, which are completely invisible, or, or which are not visible from the street. We plan on replacing them with the same old wood divided light that currently exists throughout the rest of the house. And I just wanted the committee to know that before filing the hardship application, we went to Sandy Brown and Susan Behrman, the HOA president and vice president, and also who I believe are heading up the current committee that was just established. And they have already given me their written approval. They reviewed the elevations and said that as long as it um, isn't visible from the street, they have no problem with our request. And I don't know if I need to submit it for the record, but I'm happy City to. City clerk on your right, please. And if anyone has any questions about it, I'm happy to answer them. No question. Any questions? No questions? Okay. No? Thank you. And our representative uh, from Council District 5. Good afternoon. Uh, Noah Molstein, Council Member Paul Caretz's office. Uh, our office has uh, reviewed this application and we've worked with Heather and uh, she's worked with the community as well to you know, go over the design and she's presented to us. And you know, we are uh, you know, more than supportive of, of the request. The windows will be to the rear of the property where it will be out of you know, plain sight and uh, will not have any effect on the historical significance of, of, of the neighborhood. Thank you. Um, given that testimony, and uh, this is actually a simple request with respect to the larger intent of the BMO. Um, with that, uh, we a motion to approve this. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cedillo. Any objections? No objections. So ordered. Thank you. Next item public comment, Councilman. There are no public comment cards. I believe that. Uh, leads it to the end of the meeting. Meeting adjourned. Ordered. Thank you.